Hi, this is Fatih Uzun from University of Oxford. Today, I will introduce eigenstring tomography, which is a new technique that meets eigenstring theory with tomography data in a well-designed algorithm for the full field reconstruction of residual stresses. So let's start with how tomography is used for stress mapping. Tomography, tomography allows mapping planar distribution of residual stresses. For this process, monochromatic diffraction beams is used to determine that spacing. In spite of sample density that is used in conventional absorption tomography. Elastic strains that are calculated using lattice spacings are mapped using filtered back projection and used for the calculation of residual stresses. However, it is a very difficult process to perform full scale mapping of strains in high density materials, such as additively manufactured metallic bodies. This is another stress mapping method comes with eigenstrain theory. Eigenstrain theory states the reason of residual stresses to be the non-regular distribution of permanent plastic strains. That means if permanent plastic strains are distributed non-regularly, they create, they cause formation of residual stresses. These permanent plastic strains are called eigenstrains. Solving the inverse problem of eigenstrain using experimental data corresponding to any elastic response of the material allows the determination of eigenstrains. This slide shows a bead on plate belt design. In this already published case, Electric discharge machine non contact cutting process cause relaxation of longitudinal stresses in plane A. Is it no? Oh, yeah, in plane A here. Plane A. Uh, measuring the elastic response due to stress relaxation here yeah. in terms of displacements using profilometry techniques. It can be contact or optical profilometry, allows the determination of eigenstrain fields. Importing the predetermined eigenstrain fields illustrated in, on the left side, uh, sorry, illustrated on the left side. Into Linear elastic finite element model allows calculation of residual stresses. Also, eigenstrains allow the calculation of residual stresses at further processing conditions like cutting, slicing, or sectioning. In condition one, we see the case before cut. We see residual stresses distributed in the plate before cutting. In this condition two, we see distribution of residual stresses after cutting. But, however, all but is working in this case, current reconstruction techniques necessitate the use of regularization functions and simplifying assumptions. So in the, this case, in the weld problem, we use some predictions about the distribution of the eigenstrains and determined our functions, basis functions, according to initial estimations. However, uh, but to use eigenstrain theory for tomography, we must not rely on this kind of regularization functions or simplifying assumptions. So this, they, these functions must go. Uh, we have achievement on this, but I will not 
provide details about it in this presentation. It's a long topic and we are working on a manuscript script for this purpose that will be ready within a few months. Okay, let's use eigenstrain theory to create a residual stress field. Uh, as it is illustrated, eigenstrains are imported into a rectangular body. And, and as it can be seen, eigenstrains do not have a regular distribution. So we expect this eigenstrain distribution to create stress fields. Let's look at the results. Uh, residual stresses are calculated by solving the linear elastic model using finite element method. Uh, using the eigenstrain field previously created. Uh, we call them residual stresses because there are no external loads on the material other than, sorry, there is no external load and the source of these residual stresses are only eigenstrain. Now the question is that can full field reconstruction of these residual stresses achieved using a set of experimental data. So we will extract some experimental data from this solution and we'll try to apply eigenstrain tomography. Uh, this demonstration is for presenting eigenstrain tomography by a numerical experiment. For this numerical experiment, the data is collected from five planes by interpolating the strain information to these planes. So this is three-dimensional, but I show you on the 2D section. And from these white strips, we collected strain information. Oh, battery. I think I will finish before we end, but okay, let's continue. And in this case, it is data from previous solution. Data is from previous solution. In addition, as such data can be collected from an additively manufactured specimen using destructive or non-destructive techniques. Uh, with destructive techniques, we measure elastic response corresponding to stress relaxation caused by a mechanical process. For example, it can be cut into material and you can track the change and this elastic response leads us to calculate against the distribution or we can measure diffraction patterns for strain tomography. Uh, okay. The experimental data is imported to the eigenstrain tomography algorithm for the full field reconstruction of these two stresses. This is, I think, an excellent result because when we compare with the real state, it is almost the same. Uh, almost same residual stress field is calculated using a very limited amount of data, only from five layers, and they don't even cover a real volume. And I can say that better match can be achieved by increased the variation and distribution of experimental data, but with another topic. And it can be concluded that reliability of eigenstrain tomography depends on the quality of the data. So our algorithm does the reconstruction excellently. So if you have good data, you are able to do this level of reconstruction using against tomography. So let's see a case study that I promised in the abstract using laser, uh, using laser powder bed fusion additively manufactured nickel alloy sample. 
this sample has a challenging rectangular geometry for our tomography. It is an as it is in a sprinted condition with high magnitudes of stress. So we didn't do any post process like heat treating. It is in the uh, as printed condition, and as you can see, cracks due to high magnitudes of residual stresses. It's clear this material has stresses in it, and tomography measurements are performed using high energy monochromatic 2D diffraction setup, ID15 in ESRF, from five planes that are illustrated as yellow strips. The beam is collimated to spot size of 100 times 100 microns. So you can imagine that thickness of each yellow strip is around 100 microns. And instead, the incident beam penetrates yellow layer and undergoes black detection by angle two theta onto the detector. And experimental data from five planes roughly covers 1.67% of the whole sample volume. Okay, here we see contour plot of the strain variation with projection number on the left. And uh, we see strain distribution map obtained by strain tomography, sorry, yes, strain tomography on the right in one of the scanned planes. So we have five layers and five layers of strain information. And in addition, as it can be seen, using strain information only, it has been possible to capture the corner and edge of the rectangular body. Yes. And this is the result. Full field distribution of residual stress in a literally manufactured body. We reconstructed using string tomography technique, and we used very limited number of data. Here, results are given magnitudes, sum of magnitudes of nine stress tensor components. So extreme models are not our concern, but distribution is nicely captured. And our investigations show that realistic stress values are obtained for each component of stress tensor. Uh, according to numerical experiments, using similar amount of data in a similar geometry, it's possible to get an excellent reconstruction. Accordingly, we are sure, we are satisfied about the reliability of our results. Mm, yes. Thank you for your attention.